hey what's up so let's now create our first collection what I will do I will create inside our DB stuff I will create a folder called schemas and collections are represented by JSON schemas so the first one I will create is called user.schema.js I like to add these uh, suffixes at the end of specific types of files that I will create because if you think about it in a large application you will have maybe hundreds of schemas and a hundred file imagine requiring them all in one place it's it's really bad so what you will do you will create like uh, a subtask maybe in gulp and uh, sometimes the ORM itself allows you to create this kind of tasks that will go in, inside every directory in your uh, application and get the files that end with dot schema and extract the schema definitions from there so you, you would write like maybe like five lines to do this logic instead of importing like 100 or 200 uh, schema files so this is why I like to suffix them so at the end I will use this kind of feature uh, to make my life easier and I will create my usual index to JS here to export this user schema at some point and this would be actually something uh, that is following the JSON schema criteria or specification so JSON schema I'll put a link in the description for it but uh, it's really powerful you can represent any kind of JSON data with this uh, you should definitely read about it I'll put a link in the description so but now let me just show you the basics so users or user schema will be equal to object and we will have a title I mean you don't need to have it but I will have it user schema we have a version this is uh, whenever you change your schema you will change your version right because you need to have like a version control for your schema to know uh, how the user's collection used to look like in a specific date time you will know this by these versions and actually versions will help us to write some migration functions for example maybe you combine two columns together two columns together and the old data when you try to convert it to the new data it will be corrupted so you will write a, a function that will combine these columns together and put the values from these two columns in the new column that is combined I mean this is a simple example but uh, it's really powerful that we can have this kind of feature to organize or to have a history of our database and how it used to look like because usually when you just write uh, SQL scripts or any, any kind of scripts and just dump them to the database at some point your application will become big and you, you will lose track of how the database used to look like and why we introduce these kind of changes and having a source control VI migrations and usual and typical ORMs or via these virgin properties and uh, RxDB will help us uh, track them so this is if, if you are wondering why we are using this so this is a reason why I, th I think it will become more clear when you face these kind of problems in your work hopefully, hopefully not but if you face it this is the solution to have like a migration or virgins so description will be what a typical user should look like now now this is the important mind the type of this um, schema is just a normal object so each you can say each document in this schema is just an object okay and this is actually a string sorry now this is actually another important part it's called uh, properties this is an object so this is what the document you should look like we will have a name a name for the user the type of the name is a string I will make it primary to true so this is you can say the for the primary key or the primary value for this uh, collection you can't have two names that are, that are the same I will have six uh, you can have type this is a string and this is interesting part uh, I will allow the user to, sh to choose like uh, an array of values you can use you can actually add this kind of validation 
or criteria using a keyword called ENA. You will pass here a string of possible values for this uh, six properties. If, if the user submitted somehow a value that is not part of these values, uh, the JSON validator package will throw an error. So we will have male, uh, female, and I will put another uh, password to be of type string date of birth. I won't go through all the encryption and all of this stuff. I will just store passwords uh, as they are. I won't go, I mean, encryption and SART and all of this. This is about databases and RxDB, JSON Scape and stuff like that. Date of birth will be of type string and the format will be date. This actually will be, oh, I mean, the format date, I will show you an example on how this will be or how will this look like um, I think it will be something like year or month day year something like this I mean we will come to, we will come to it eventually but yeah let's just continue um, yeah another property I will have is and add addresses so I, each user can have many addresses and I want to create an, maybe in the future I will create uh, another collections or maybe I will create another collections and I will show you how we can create a, uh, a reference between this collection but for now I will create a, col uh, a collection that have nested collections to represent relationships so each user can have zero or more addresses and this addresses has the type of array so inside the user collection we have an array called addresses might be empty and if not empty we will have a max item of 5 this will actually have ha will be in the validation so the type should be array for the addresses if the user trying to submit an address and couple of addresses for example and the user should only have 5 uh, addresses this will only be this will be in the validation as well which is very nice uh, we can actually have a property called unique items this will make sure that all the addresses are unique which is something really interesting now to define how each address will look like we will use a property called items this is an object the type would be object you can have yeah we can have maybe strings maybe another array but for me it will be an object that consists of two properties just like we did here so properties, the first one is the country of type string. The second one is the city, also type string, and extra info, also type string. So these are the addresses, and as simple as that, we can have a nested collection inside our collection or nested array of collections now let's create another thing which will represent another kind of relation or the same kind it's one too many so we have we will have also an array of posts for each user if type is an array items we don't have max items here because you can put you can have as much as you want for each post will be an object and it will have properties id type of string I will actually use the short ID package to generate these IDs actually it might be a good idea to add them inside the users as well but for the users I will just work with the, uh, with the name as the primary key here I will generate the IDs myself using the short ID package and we will have title type will be equal to string we will have body also type will be string and at the end we have we can actually have a property called required this is an array of the required properties in all of this json schema so required the stuff would be the name you should always submit a user with a name the six and the 
password anything else is conditional at the end I will export this just in schema so module.exports equal the user schema this one this this token like this or this variable and a shortcut for that is this and now let's go to our index.js and our schema and let's export it the same way we exported our create connection so module.exports be equal to spread the object that will be exported from the user's to schema and what I would call it or you know I'll just yeah I'll just leave it like this this is exactly what I want now let's create to, let's go to our create connection and let's import this is this is schema for now it's a single schema so const require from schemas require or destruct the user schema what we can create what we can do is after we creating the database we can actually put db dot collection and let's create this collection so it it need it requires a schema we have that user schema and the name for this collection is called users and that's it let's await that and it's on order to me as you can see we have uh, this dump function uh, console log this so we have this tutorial database inside of it we have this collection uh, and inside of this collection we have these docs and as you can see this is now how the database folder uh, is named and uh, thank you we will start in the next video creating some CRUD operations on this database.